Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming to hear us talk about freight. Um, I'm super excited to be here to hear you, uh, to talk about the interesting and unique challenges that Uber, uh, Uber Freight Engineering has. Um, so in case you guys are wondering how we uh, scaled so quickly, we actually just took the rideshare app and then changed all the car images to be truck images. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's not what we did. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think what's interesting about Uber Freight, though, is that we, we have a very unique uh, vantage point. We're actually quite different from the rideshare industry. Um, and then the way we move quickly is actually to figure out the inflection point in which we should leverage Uber systems or build our own stuff. So this talk is kind of more about rethinking rethinking freight and Uber. Uh, <laughs> so like Eric mentioned, we're going incredibly fast. I got to read my notes up here now. Oh yeah. And we're, <laughs> we're transforming it into an efficient marketplace, very similar to what we did with the ride share business. Um, so Uber and Uber Freight Engineering is supporting that new marketplace with data and technology, but we're also um, rethinking Uber at the same time. So an example I can give you is uh, on, in the rideshare business, we've actually optimized our hardware and like our systems around trips that take like on the order of minutes, whereas on freight, like a truck ride could take on the order of days. So you can imagine those optimizations in their hardware and the optimizations we did around like matching, for example, is actually um, quite specific to rideshare and not, not amenable to freight. So um, we're in a really good position to figure out, well, how do we actually... Um, make Uber's platforms much more flexible and solid for the future and for ourselves. So just to give you guys a little bit of background, um, around 2014, we moved from a single monolithic API and um, app to a highly distributed services-oriented architecture. Um, today, we're actually probably at the order of thousands of microservices. Um, so this complex Complex network makes it quite difficult to build on top of. So Uber is actually in the process of moving to something like this. Um, so this is actually a pretty common software paradigm layer cake. So you want to categorize and organize your systems and components into layers that actually have like structured rules on how they interact with each other. Um, so yeah, that's great. We all like cake, um, but the, the, the challenge is, how do you get from what I showed you here? Okay, just remember what I showed you here. <laughs> this complex ne network of systems to something like this. And um, I think being on Uber Freight has actually allowed us to help ourselves in Uber in that way, because we are existentially driven to build on top of these systems. If we don't build on top of these systems, we cannot move quickly, and um, we're pretty much like out there on our own. <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to go over a concrete case study of how we went about to evolve Uber's platforms um, in the direction of Freight's business requirements. So um, this picture is way too small, so I'm just going to try to explain what you're seeing up here. So order management at Uber is actually quite common and actually it's common in all most e-commerce applications. So you have an order management system that handles their, your product discovery and then you have a way to create your order and fulfill that order somehow. And then at some point in time, you wanna you know, pay for that, that order. Um, so at Uber, you know, there's like eats orders, there's uh, ride requests and on freight, there's like you know, freight, uh, freight loads. So, um, we examined Uber's systems and said, okay, well, how do we actually get the unique um, requirements from freight, such as on freight, we, we um, don't do automatic matching, right? Like, for example, on rideshare, if you want to take a ride, your driver is not looking at a list of riders to choose who to pick up. <laughs> Yes, that definitely does not happen. Um, and on freight, though, like you actually look in the trucker app and you can choose the loads that you want to deliver. So those type, of, um, those type of differences actually are really important when we try to understand what our requirements are 
and how that's going to help us um, adopt a platform. So the second thing that we want to do is once we understand our own capabilities and our own requirements, um, what's available to us. So at this point in time, it's actually quite, quite standard like at any other startup. If you were to look at a third party solution, um, there's things that you actually want to think about. Um, the only difference with Uber, though, is that um, when we look at Uber's platforms, we're the same company. So, you know, if you see a platform that's maybe almost there, you don't just um, discard that, that option. You actually have a chance, a very unique chance to go and collaborate with that platform and actually make that platform um, what you need. So I, I think this is actually very unique to Uber as well. Like at other big companies, um, there's this kind of stereotype that you would only be concerned with your small focus area and you wouldn't actually have a, a lot of context in terms of everything else around you because it's all like very mature and built for you well at uber um, we're literally evolving like right now <laughs> yeah um, and freight is probably the next business case that is so drastically different that we have a chance to actually make uber like a, a much more solid platform um, so being on freight i really enjoy the fact that we get to iterate on very unique um, product specific challenges, but then you also can look more broadly and understand the platforms that you're building on top of. And not even understand them, you can actually like contribute to them. Yeah, so some of the things that we think about is like, is that platform reliable? Um, is it well supported? Uh, is there documentation and is it scalable? And lastly, like, can I actually extend my own business logic and data on top of this, this platform. I'm actually gonna uh, talk more about the last part because that was a big factor in how we um, strategize to move forward with these, these Uber platforms. So when we were looking at the, the order management systems at Uber, um, some of those systems are like old legacy. And when I, when I say old, they're probably like three years old, but that's like super old at Uber. Um, and the only way you can extend them is actually like download the repo, go into the code, and like just add more stuff into it. So I call that multi-tenant code with no tooling, with no ownership tooling. <laughs> um, so this extensibility pattern is not great. We try to avoid using this because um, you're not fault isolated from your neighbors. You can actually make a change and then for freight and then bring the ride share system down, for example. Um, and also because you're changing um, in code, and it's not actually expressed in the platform's APIs, the next business case, whether it's a freight one or a new business case, they would have to do the same expensive exercise. Um, so another one of the extensibility patterns we encountered when looking at order management systems at Uber were um, like the Eats ordering systems and the Uber for business ordering systems. And the thing with these systems is they're, they're much better than what we saw earlier. Um, they actually kind of stitched together, I call it DIY order platforms, because <laughs> they all kind of did their own uh, version of the or, an order management platform um, using these very like solid building blocks underneath. Um, so this is not bad actually. The only, the only caveats here is that if you have a cross cutting concern, so let's say you have the Uber fraud team and they want to do fraud checks on every single order, so they would potentially have to go to every single DIY platform and include their, their checks in there. Um, and if you have a cross-cutting concern like safety down the line, that team would have to go and do their own one-off integrations as well. So this is actually very costly like across the board for Uber. Um, oh, and one more thing about this is because these are on, all in disparate places, if you wanted to do something kind of cr more creative like having a multi-leg trip where your order consists of one um, ride share leg and one bike share leg, you would have to, because those are one-off solutions, you would actually have to create like a one-off integration to do something like that. So, so on freight, we thought about all this <laughs> and we're thinking, well, you know, we can create our own DIY platform. Um, but it, it, it's gonna force us to build our technical debt and then all the cool stuff that Eric mentioned, like 
doing load recommendations for truckers and making facility appointments like really efficient, like those things are gonna have to be balanced with us like dealing with the technical debt from, from everything I discussed here. So we took, we took the, the investment with um, our sister teams like Eats and Uber for Business uh, along with the platform providers at Uber, and we came up with a much better solution, which is a unified order ma management system that had very strong and flexible extensibility um, patterns, which I'm gonna go into a little bit. So this is a, a much better place for us because later on, if you have, let's say, a requirement on a freight to use a shopping cart, it would just be out of the box available for us because we we're already on this, this backbone system. So the extension patterns that worked really well for us is because you have one interface, but many different types of order data, like again, Eats data has like, you know, the menu item that you selected and, you know, possibly prices of like certain foods and things. And they also have um, items of work that are not only transport related, like the restaurant has to make the food, which is like one more job. Um, so these disparate order models actually can be expressed in one single API interface through polymorphic data modeling. Um, and I can go into more detail with this, but I'll leave it to Q&A if you, you guys want to know more what that means. <laughs> um, and then asynchronous extensions are great when you want to extend your business logic. So if if Uber Freight had a very specific um, workflow that was specific to us, like we wanted to go and notify the, the facility that this trucker is coming, um, you, can you can actually listen on a business event hub um, and then do a very freight specific uh, workflow from there. And then all other domains can do the same thing. Uh, and then th there's also synchronous extensions. So synchronous extensions, you need that too because not every workflow is can be done asynchronously. So for example, order validation. You don't actually wanna create an order um, and then go and cancel it in an asynchronous hook. You wanna actually make sure that the order validation happens synchronously with the, the actual order creation. Um, and then the la lastly is kind of very detailed. Very, now I realize how detailed it is. But, um, you can also have hosted extensions where uh, a platform team can provide an SDK or even like a configura configuration based extension where you make your changes and they actually host it and then they provide the SLAs and reliability around your code. Um, so those are the parts that we really liked about our new system. So kind of to summarize all the things I went through, there's four steps, like four oversimplified steps. The first one is just understand yourself, like understand your own domain's requirements. Um, understand what's available to you. Um, and again, at Uber, it's a little bit special because it's not just yes or no. We have the power to make it yes. <laughs> um, and then number three is make sure that the external interfaces provided by that platform is actually amenable to fast, fast changing business requirements. Freight business requirements change every day. And so we need to have extensibility patterns that can actually work as quickly as the business requirement is changing. Um, and then lastly, uh, just don't, don't meet the bar, like raise it for, your, for freight and for Uber. Um, if you know that something you're doing can benefit freight, but it's gonna make it way easier for Uber, like uh, bike share, for example, or public transit uh, rides later, then figure that out. Um, so lastly, the one thing I would leave you with is that this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg with what we're doing with the freight management systems. Um, we really see this as the beginning of evolving solid, like externalized e-commerce concepts. Um, and it kind of, it can be bike share, it can be public transit, and it can even be really complex uh, fulfillment stages. Like you can have something go by train that goes on a boat and then comes to you on a, a freight truck, all powered by the Uber platform systems. Um, so the more we standardize now, then the more we can participate in these more futuristic um, business cases later. 
Um, so that's all I had. You guys can ask me more questions during the Q&A. Um, but for now, I'm going to pass the mic on to Adam, who is our care experience designer, who's going to have a lot more exciting looking slides than I have. <laughs>